three things that I do to make sure that my dreams come true. The three things that I do to make sure my goals don't fall on the ash heap of New Year's resolutions past, like so many things in our life do, um, whether it's health goals, business goals, anything at all. Um, and these are the things that I've just picked up over the years, uh, being an entrepreneur, being a dad, being a husband, uh, being an old football coach. These are the things that um, I learned along the way um, that help us uh, not fail and help us achieve our goals. All right. So let's start with these uh, three things. Number one, we are always outcome independent. We have an outcome independent mindset. We don't want to get fixated on the goal itself. Now, I know that sounds kind of counterintuitive, but man, if you just totally focus on the number, I, I want to sell a hundred thousand dollars. I want to help a hundred thousand people. I want to lose 50 pounds. If you're outcome uh, dependent, then if the outcome is not going your way at any given time, um, you're, you're going to get discouraged and you're probably going to quit. I, I learned this uh, being a football coach. You know, I always said I wanted to win on Friday night, but my focus was always on the winning. And as second as we got by, as soon as we got behind or the second as we started losing, um, you know, my, my motivation went away. My enthusiasm went away. My inspiration went away. And I realized it wasn't the outcome that uh, mattered. You got to be outcome independent. Did I say that correctly? I'm not sure if I said that right. This thing is you got to be outcome independent. You want to focus on the opportunities that you can have action on, the things that you can control and not on the outcome. In football, whenever I focus just on the, uh, the outcome, um, I always got discouraged. But when I focused on the things I could control, the opportunities, then I always did it right. Let me tell you what I mean. I can't control the outcome of winning a football game, but I could control the opportunity to practice. I could control the opportunity of watching all the game film. I could control the opportunity of having my game plan ready and walking into the game before Friday night, already having visualized every single situation that could happen. So I, if I detach myself from the outcome and I only focus on the opportunities, then I can go out and I can do the things that will add up and lead to the outcome that I want on Friday night. If I don't get the outcome, okay, fine. I'll try again. I've got to focus on the opportunities to give myself the best chance possible. I also have to focus on being on offense. You know, so, so many people I see focus on the outcome, the goal, the dream, and then they go on defense. They're like, okay, now what do I do to make sure I don't fail at that situation, to make sure that I don't ruin my opportunity, to make sure I don't screw it up. So many people are defensive in going after their goals and dreams, right? Because they just don't want to mess up the perceived opportunity in their brain, the outcome that they want. But I have the opposite approach. I want to go on offense. If I'm going to set a goal, right, if I know what I want to achieve, and then I know the opportunities that can add up to give me that goal, then I want to go on offense and I want to attack it with reckless abandon. You know, the opportunities in a football game to win the football game on Friday night are do your homework on Sundays when you're watching film, teach as hard as you can, everything that you need the kids to learn on Monday, and then practice Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Tuesday is usually offense. Wednesday is usually defense. And then Thursday is usually special teams and walkthroughs. And then bring your game plan in and call the plays. Call your plays exactly like you wrote them down. We have to go on offense during the week to win and get the outcome we want on Friday night. It's the same way with business, same way with your spouse, same way with your kids, same way with everything else. You can't be passive when you're pursuing the outcomes that you want. The outcomes will never happen. Don't focus on the outcome. Focus on the opportunities. Go on offense and attack the things that add up to victory, and you're much more likely to achieve your outcome you want. And finally, if we're not going to be outcome dependent, if we're going to be outcome independent, which means we've got to shift our focus to opportunities and going on offense, we also have to have outrageous effort. Nothing is just going to fall into our lap. Any goals you set, any New Year's resolutions that you set, y'all, listen, you and me, we've been around the block. We know that it's not just going to happen. And it's not just going to happen because we show up. It's not just going to happen because we go through the motions. It's going to happen because we deliver outrageous effort. You got to put in the work. You got to roll up your sleeves. You got to open your wallet. And you got to get after it. If we're going to 10X our business this year, it's going to take me being out on the road speaking three out of four weeks every single month. It's going to take me staying up long nights. It's going to take me working on the weekends. And if I'm still going to have my wife and I'm still going to have my spouse and I'm still going to have my kids and I'm going to have the incredible relationships in my life at the end of this effort, I'm going to have to put outrageous effort over there too. You got to get outrageous if you're going to be achieving your goals. 
You got to have outrageous enthusiasm, out, outrageous effort, and you got to get up and you got to get after it. So the number one thing we do is we're outcome independent. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to be depressed or falling apart if we're not achieving every landmark and benchmark we want. I'm not going to focus just on the goal itself. 10 X my business win on Friday night, have a great marriage, be awesome with my kids. No, I'm going to be outcome independent. And instead I'm going to focus on opportunity going on offense an outrageous effort. If I do those things, I'm much more likely to achieve my dreams and goals that I set at the beginning of the year. All right. The second thing that I uh, have learned along the way in my wise old years as a uh, <laughs> entrepreneur, husband, father, and general dude trying to go through life like the rest of y'all is what I call EDDs. As soon as I figure out the opportunities I want, figure out how I'm going to go on offense, commit to creating outrageous effort, decide to be outcome independent. I set up what I call EDDs. Now I got this from when I was a football coach. You know, the first year I was ever a head football coach, we got beat every single week. I was 0 and 10 the first year as a head football coach. And I realized it was because I was always focused on winning and the goals and the X's and O's. And I wasn't focusing on the fundamentals. And then at West Virginia university, I used to be a graduate assistant there. We had these things called EDDs, everyday drills. These were five things that every position did every day. And if we could just do those things, right, then we would be okay. Like defensive backs would always backpedal. They would tackle. They would uh, do drills where they were intercepting the football. They would do all the fundamentals that they needed for their uh, job, for their position. So every position group had different EDDs. But if everyone did their EDDs, if everyone did the fundamentals, then we would have a great chance to win. Everything else we could add on top of it. And I started looking at my business a couple of years ago and I said, hey, we need EDDs. Like, what are the five things in every area of our business that if I just did these five things, we would be okay. It's the same thing with goals. Whenever you're trying to achieve a goal, you've got to set a goal. Uh, you, you set your goal, you set the outcome you want, but then you got to figure out what are the exact components of adding up to that goal. Like, for example, I want our online business to grow this year. I want Flip Five Styles podcast to have more listeners. I want us to make more membership sales. And I want to get our name out there more so that more people discover our brand and figure out what we're doing. So I got to come up with the five things in our company that if we just did these five things every week, all the other stuff is good. All the other stuff helps, but it's just fuel to the fire. What is the log at the bottom of the fireplace? That's your EDDs. So for Flip Lifestyle, uh, uh, for Shane Sam's show, for the company that runs our podcasting arm, our everyday drills, the five things we've got to focus on every week are number one, record and release podcasts. There will always be a Shane Sam show on Thursday. There will always be a Flip Lifestyle podcast on Tuesday. Focus there. That's the fundamentals. If you don't have a podcast, you don't have a business in our world. The second thing is all of our opt-ins must ask people to give us their email address. If on our blog post, on our YouTube channel, on our podcast, we're always asking for emails, then our list will grow. Therefore, we will always have prospects for customers. So every single week on all of our shows, we've got to have uh, ask for people's emails. Number three, we've got to email our list most days of the week. We email our list four out of seven days every single week. And we got to be selling on those emails. We've got to be asking people to join our memberships, which are our revenue generators or buy our products. We need to be doing webinars or hosting in-person seminars every single month. And then I need to be seeking out guesting opportunities. So my brand, Shane Sam's Flipped Lifestyle, Shane and Jocelyn, we are all being introduced to new people every single month. So our five things, man, record a podcast, ask for opt-ins, email our list, do some webinars, be a guest. If I do those every single month, our business is going to be just fine. So after you figure out your outcome and after that mindset shift of being outcome independent happens, you got to establish everyday drills that your business can do. Say no to everything else. I didn't make a new year's resolution list this year, guys. I made a say no list. I was texting my mastermind one day and I was like, Eric, we were talking about goals and dreams. I said, guys, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take about 30 minutes and I'm going to come up with about 10 things I'm saying no to in the next week. New Year's resolutions can come and go. Those can be fanciful dreams. But if I say no to something and remove it from my life, it is gone. And opportunity cost is a real thing. If you say yes to one thing, you say no to another. So say yes to the five things, the EDDs, the everyday drills that actually move the needle in your business and go say no to everything else. All right, so we're going to be outcome independent in 2022. We're going to say yes to our EDDs, our everyday drills, the things that actually move the needle and say no to everything else. And finally, we started setting goals different back in 2021. Instead of setting this massive, huge goal, I now do good, get up, and great goals. Now, some of y'all have probably heard this called good, better, best. 
but I like things that alliterate and they weren't enough G's in there for me. So I went good, get up and great. Anytime we're setting a goal, I'm going to set three different goals. The first is a good goal. This is a goal that's a little bit of a stretch, but I'm pretty confident we're going to knock it out of the park. I like to have the floor of our goals be this good goal because this keeps morale high. This is less stressful, less anxiety. This gives us peace as we're working toward the goals. Like, hey, we're on track to get there. You know, we do weekend seminars and, you know, we sell high ticket coaching packages, um, high ticket services uh, to different people around the country. And we might walk in and say, hey, guys, this is a room of 50 people. You know, we want to do at least $100,000 in sales or something like that. I'm just picking numbers out of my hat. That might be our good goal. It's something we know we can get unless we screw it up. Don't fumble. Don't own goal. Don't hit a foul ball. Don't strike out. Just go out there and be you. Focus on your fundamentals and you're going to hit your good goal. We love this goal because, man, keeping your team morale high, keeping you high, keeping you stress-free is half the battle on achieving great things. Sometimes there's a tendency for us to watch what other people are doing and set a goal that they think is good, that they say is good, but it might be a little out of our reach at the moment. I want to make sure we've got one good part of this goal that we can do it. So if I'm going to have a goal for $10 million in sales as my biggest goal, which I'll talk about in a second, I might set a goal for $1 million, something I've done before or I just quite haven't done uh, to be a good goal. The next is my get up goal, man. It's the gets that gets me excited. Like, man, if we hit this, I'm going to get up and go. I'm going to get up and party. I'm going to get up and get after it. That's my get up goal. It's, it's a stretch. It's a little bit more of a stretch. It's something that you definitely haven't done before. And you're kind of reaching just beyond your fingertips to kind of go get it. So if my goal is 10 million, maybe this is 5 million. My good goal might be 1 million. This is the one you're really pushing for, man. If you get this, there's going to be a Christmas party for the ages. We're going to have a good time. The business is definitely taking it to the next level. The marriage is definitely taking it to the next level. The parenting is definitely going to the next level. It's going to make you get up and get excited. And then finally, we have the great goal, man. It would be great if we did this, like beyond what we thought possible. This is going to put us in another stratosphere, put us in another level. This is going to make people wake up and take notice of what we're doing in our business, in our family, in our life. So we set three goals with everything. You know, maybe my good, my good goal to lose weight is to lose 10 pounds. I can lose 10 pounds. Maybe my get up and get excited goal is lose 25 pounds. Maybe my great goal is 50 pounds. Lord have mercy. If I lost 50 pounds, I'd be making a course and selling it for millions of dollars because everybody else would want to know how I did it. With every goal or every outcome, we always have a good get up and great target so that we can make sure we're pursuing our goals in a stress-free way. We're getting excited about the goals that we have. And we're holding ourselves to extremely high standards in the process. So that's how, that's the tactical way that we achieve our goals. And I can tell you right now, y'all, we have failed very little in the last 10 years. When my wife, Joss, and I sit down and we set an outcome independent goal and we decide the fundamentals, the EDDs, the everyday drills that we're going to do without fail, consistently, prolifically, relentlessly throughout the year to make that goal happen. And when we lay out that spectrum of a good goal, a get up goal and a great goal, all we got to do is wake up. All we got to do is show up. And all we got to do is lead and make it happen. And I know that if you got to adopt some of these principles, man, don't focus on this big, these highfalutin goals that you're setting, these New Year's resolutions that never come to pass. Set big goals, dream bold dreams, then become outcome independent. Focus all your energy on opportunity, offense, and outrageous enthusiasm and effort for that outcome. Sit down and write down exactly what it will take to make that outcome come to pass and come up with the five key actions you can do every day, every week, every month that will add up to the outcome you want. And then lay those goals out on a spectrum. You're good, you get up, and you're great. And if you do that, I know you're going to have a great 2022. And I know you're going to go out there and accomplish all the things that you set out to achieve.